This computer is going to break YouTube. How do I know? Because it is going to the spiffing Brit. That's right, the one and only king of YouTube exploits asked us to build him a PC with one requirement. It must be cooled by T, which is stupid. So we did it. That's right, friends. We will be using actual literal T to cool a computer. To what end? Well, because we can. Also, because Seasonic loves it when we do this kind of crazy stuff, and they sponsored this video. Uh, to everyone else for whom this will be extremely hard to watch, all I can say is, please forgive me. The first step of building a tea PC is, of course, making yourself some tea. Here we have some Yorkshire tea from Taylor's. This is straight from Yorkshire and Britain, and here we go. Some good smelling tea. Now you might be wondering why, if this is the teapot, I have uh, three other teapots. And that's because one of these is going into the PC. The case is still getting painted, but you can get a basic idea of what I'm thinking. So. Vertical GPU is going to be going right here, and then the teapot is hopefully going to be pouring into it. Now, how exactly we get, you know, the tea into the pot and out of the pot, not entirely sure. Getting the tea out of the pot is easy enough. We're just going to pull a little cystoscopy, jam this down in there, she's done. The more difficult bit is getting the tea in. So I think we're gonna have to drill a hole in the side right here. I have no clue how it's gonna work. I have this diamond drill bit. I don't know. If that doesn't work out, I also have an aluminum teapot and that's really easy to drill into. According to the instructions, you want a stream of water and to start at a 45 degree angle and then turn it straight. How that'll go, um, let's find out. Ah, sorry, teapot. Okay, okay, it's working. Wow, that just worked. That was way easier than I expected. Whoever would have thought that just reading the instructions and buying the right tool would work. <laughs> As for the other hole, I'm just gonna apply a little bit of lube here. Oh, it just went right, wow. This is going so much better than I expected. <laughs> I haven't quite decided yet if this is going to be the reservoir or just a spot that water goes through, but we can worry about that later. The hard bits are done. There's a hole in the side and we have a tube coming out of it. <laughs> It's gonna be fantastic. With the tube in, the next problem is mounting. Now I have this hand from Ikea and I sort of have two options here. The first is to hold it like this, chop the base off and make a mount so that it attaches to the top of the case. And then it can be held something like that and pour tea down into the GPU. Now, I'm a little bit concerned about, you know, just all of this staying together and a teapot ending up somewhere in between, I don't know, falling out of a FedEx truck in the middle of the Atlantic. So instead, I think we're going to hold the teapot like we do here in Canada, like this, which is definitely a thing that we do here and it's not just way easier to put it on like so. How's that? For the GPU, we're going with PNY's RTX 49. So this thing is an absolute beast. 24 gigabytes of RAM, don't even have to worry about Skyrim mods filling up all of that. Now, PNY did have some very, very tough stipulations that we had to follow. They said, well, we'll send you a 4090, but only if you also use 32 gigabytes of our DDR5 6200 megahertz and our two terabyte PCIe Gen 4 SSD. Jeez, twist my arm, guys. That's, <laughs> I wish more people had stipulations like that, jeez. <laughs> First step of water blocking a GPU is just remove all of the screws and then just very gently pull up on the PCB. Oh dear. Oh, oh. just like that. <laughs> For the GPU cooler, we're going with the East Block GPX from AlphaCool and this should Fit. They're not entirely sure. It's very early days for water cooling RTX 4090s and because NVIDIA's are assholes, they uh, don't give their partners boards early. Cannot wait for T to just clog these micro fins. It's gonna be so beautiful. Next, you have to apply the thermal pads to your GPU block or to the GPU itself. 
For thermal paste, we're gonna be using Thermo Grizzly's Cryonaut. This stuff is fantastic. And there we go, we have a water-cooled GPU. Now, Alpha Cool did warn us beforehand that PNY's version of the 4090 is very slightly different than the Founders Edition. It has this just, what is that, like half an inch of PCB on the back here, just so they can have their RGB headers. That's the only difference, and I think it's fine. Oh, guys, Nicholas has been working on the paint for this case for the last couple of days, and it has turned out so good. Take a look at this right here. Oh, heck yeah. And all it cost us was the Irish viewers on this video. Let's see if we can get all the parts in here. First thing to go in is this motherboard. This is the Z790E Strix from Asus, and it is a freaking beast. And also, this one has a feature that most motherboards do not. Take a look at this, Andy. It is positively covered in Vaseline. Just, oh, she's a real greasy boy. Look at that. This is because we uh, kind of set Tom's stuff on fire just, just a little bit. Go watch that video, it's hilarious. <laughs> Next up is our CPU. We have this Core i9-13900K and we verified the quality of it, making sure that it'll go up to 6.4 gigahertz. She's really quick. Look at the fins on this, Andy. What an absolute mod. Holy crap. Look at that. The basic plan seems to be coming together. 360 rad there, 420 that's going up in the top. We've got our pump res combo that's gonna be hidden down here. I kinda wanna make it seem like the teapots are reservoir, even though for practicality reasons it's not. Teapot's up here, but we have a little bit of an issue. Uh, yeah, there's all of this space down here where you normally have a pump res combo or something like that, but instead it's just kind of empty. I was doing some exploring of what to try to do in here, and we might actually be able to just take off the back of this box and slide it right over top of this. Obviously, I can't do it with the actual box, but it'll look hopefully fairly similar. I decided that using the hand to mount the teapot was a pretty terrible idea. And I also decided that me designing it was also a terrible idea. So Tynan did. Yeah, at least for the first pass. Made a nice little adapter. So first thing, it appears to actually hold the teapot, which is great. The next part is figuring out exactly where it's gonna sit and how it's gonna look. That might be a little steep. <laughs> we should also check clearance on the fans. Oh, yeah, that's a problem. I don't even need to check to know that that's a problem. Okay, that's good to know. Right. More iterations to go. Here we <laughs> Yay! It turns out that planning a loop around a teapot is actually kind of annoying. Uh, first of all, this thing's rather big, so just physically fitting it in the case took us roughly this many tries. Now it goes in pretty well. You can come over here and have a look. Only problem is this tube in the back very slightly hits it. But that said, we can start planning out everything else. Another problem with designing around a teapot is that everything in here is directional. So water has to go in there, out there, in here, out there. I originally planned it in a way that makes a lot of sense for the water cooling bits, but it turns out that that would have the water going up into the teapot, not acceptable. Had to completely redo all of it. Uh, all of this kind of, it's gonna be a bit of a mess, but I think it's all gonna be worth it when we see the T go right into the GPU. It's gonna be so beautiful. One other very fun thing about this build are these fittings. Now these are from iBuyPower and they're little shark bite fittings. These are prototypes, they don't exist yet, but Maybe, if you guys like them, they'll start actually producing. In my testing, these things work really well. So you can just push it on like so. Do, do, do. Yep. It's on there nice and good. And I can just pull on this so hard. Yeah, it does not want to come off. But then you just push the fitting in a little bit. Shark bite comes undone and boom. We'll be doing hard light and water cooling the same way that we always do. Cut a piece of tube that's a bit too long. Stick a little noodly boy in the center so that you don't get it too warped. I recommend putting a little bit of water on this just to sort of lube it up. Then heat gun, bend it, sand it down to size, and we should be good. When our next print is done, it looks like everything's going to work out water cooling wise, but it is going to make it very difficult to get access to 
everything else, which means I think it's time for us to talk about our sponsor, Seasonic. Ugh. Going in this case is the Prime TX1600, and this thing is a freaking beast. Like just, first of all, look at the size of this box, and then look at the size of this boy. I don't know if you can see in here, but look at the size of those high side caps. What an absolute beast this thing is. As I'm sure you guys already know, we absolutely love Seasonic here. They're brave enough that they sponsored a video where we bought just an absolutely massive power supply tester to test their power supplies against everyone else. That's how much they believe in their stuff. It comes with a 12 year warranty, and I personally have a Seasonic power supply in my case, and also just a Seasonic case, which is also really good. Maybe check that out as well. Anyway, should we put this guy in there? I guess it won't be permanent. We need to find the acrylic panel that goes right here, but what a beast. The Prime 1600 does come with these excellent black cables. They feel really durable and are much better than the ketchup and mustard that you had in the past. But what they don't scream is, I worship the Big Ben. That's why we got these cables here. Ugh. Have you ever seen such a British 24 pin? <laughs> We're in really good shape today if our newest print just works. It has been fantastic to have such fast printers here. We have the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and also the big old Pantheon, I don't know, Pantheon printer. By using both of these, we are able to rip through six prototypes in a day. With any luck, this guy right here is our final print. This clears the tube right here. We are in good shape. We are in fact not in good shape. Fits great, wow. And all it took was that much material. On the back of the case, we're going to laser etch in the Spiffing Brits watermark across the whole thing, which it turns out was fairly non-trivial because the watermark is, uh, well, it doesn't repeat properly. <laughs> this meant that poor Nicholas here had to basically just recreate the whole thing from scratch yesterday, but we're gonna finally be able to do it. <laughs> One other really smart thing that he did is instead of having the watermark on an angle, we're taking the whole back panel and putting that on an angle so that the laser, when it cuts it, isn't going to be leaving any fuzzy edges. These lines should be real nice and crisp because that's the way the laser's traveling. Looking at it, getting this teapot in there is going to be rather difficult. We have a bit of an order of operations problem. We planned on just bolting it in here but there's kind of an issue where in order to bolt the teapot in, we need to remove this radiator. But in order to get this radiator in, we need to remove the teapot. So yeah, that's a bit of an issue. To solve that, we're going to be using these little guys. They're called heat set inserts. So this right here, basically you stick a little soldering iron up its bum, and then you just press it into the plastic there, plastic melts. And then once the plastic has, you know, dried, you have a little fastener in there. This will require some small changes and all of our holes to be completely accurate to where they need to be, but all of that's very doable and we need to do another print anyway. Final V2 of the mount seems to have worked. To hold the teapot in place, we have a rubber gasket, an acrylic piece, and a bunch of washers. It worked. Now you might've noticed that the GPU is gone. That was so that I could easily attach things like the RGB headers and the front panel IO. GPU is going back in now and the connectors that are behind it are not gonna come out because I have just covered them in hot glue. There's nothing worse than having super fiddly hard to get connectors behind a water-cooled GPU. Absolute nightmare stuff. To attach our soft tubing, we're going to be using server grade fittings from Alpha Cool that also have shark bite fittings in them. This is so dumb, <laughs> oh, yeah. but, but like so awesome at the same time. Are we gonna run tea through it? Yeah. Yes! Green tea or what? No, English breakfast, right? Yeah. <laughs> I have to get this little chain of fittings in there. Somehow it's all covered in Vaseline now. Oh, God. This is all in here. And if I can just get this tube inside, look at this, Brandon. We have a PC with a teapot in it. I'm sorry, dear viewer, but my plan was to lie to you. Just fill this whole thing up, prep everything, make sure all of it's good to go, so then later when we're filming, we could just fill it with tea and it would all work fine. Problem is, things have not been going so great. You see this leak tester here? Well, 
it very, very slowly has been losing air and I have no clue from where. Last night I spent the better part of two and a half hours just fiddling with the leak tester, trying to figure out what in here possibly could be leaking. I have absolutely no idea. It's the slowest leak ever. Like, it doesn't even move if you just look at it. Tried two leak testers, that's not the problem. I'm just gonna fill it with water and see where water comes out. <laughs> because we basically know this is going to leak, I'm leaving the power supply out of the case and the only thing that's powered is the pump. Yeah, let's just leave it like this for a couple minutes and see if we find any drips. Are we dry? Oh, good, we're dry. I figured it out. It wasn't too bad. Turns out just this fitting right here needed to be a little bit tighter. And by a little bit tighter, I mean a lot tighter. I just had to absolutely send it with these pliers. She's all marred up, but it's, it's back here so you don't see it. It's totally fine. Anyway, loops together. Loops not leaking anymore. Let's set her up, tidy up the back a bit. Fill this thing with some tea. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, RAM will only work in the first two slots, so the A channel, and also it only boots in slow mode. I was having a bit of issues with this motherboard and CPU beforehand, but I was able to just downclock the RAM a bit and it was fine. Now it's just not working at all. To solve it, I grabbed this 13900KF that we had sitting around for a different YouTuber that I'm gonna make a PC for very soon, but Maybe this is a spiffing Brits new CPU if this goes in and just works. I didn't think beforehand that the Vaseline that was in there would be the problem, but just so that you guys don't say that that's what the problem is, I have removed all the Vaseline and checked all the pins. There's no crap in there or anything. I'm guessing that there was something wrong with just the memory controller or the pins in this and just how it was mounted slightly differently with this CPU cooler was enough to knock her off kilter totally. Well, here's where we find out if things are bad or catastrophic. Whoa. Catastrophic. <laughs> Fortunately, nothing actually got wet there besides the case and the table. Let's try this again. Come on, come on. Memory's still training, oh, ah. Oh, she works! All right, CPU is dead. That's absolute best case for us. Ha, huh, look at this. Four sticks of RAM, 64 gigabytes of memory. We are back in business. Also, sorry you don't have a quick sync encoder, Tom. Uh, I don't know, deal with it. First of all, can I say I love it? The Union Jack color scheme, mwah. Uh, but what the hell is this pump? It's the Alpha Cool whatever this is. Oh my God, it's full <laughs> of tea. Mmm, it smells so good. It's because the, the box of tea goes over it once it's all filled. Oh, excellent. Is this gonna leak? No, why would that leak? What do you mean, why would that leak? Look why at it. Why would that leak? Yeah, look at it. There's a big giant gap in it. Yeah, so? Look in the teapot. Oh, sh it's fake. Yeah, it's totally fake. It's totally <laughs> fake. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's part of why I got this pump. I was hoping we could fit it in there. We tried to do like reservoirs and stuff, but like getting something in, pretty easy. Getting something in and like attaching a fitting afterwards. This is great though. You get all the effects of the, the tea pouring into the GPU, but none of the risk of, well, it... Pouring everywhere else. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, do you wanna make some tea? I do. I see we've got a few different methods of making tea from classic to bougie. Well, this is actually for making coffee, but I think it's gonna be very helpful for us because when you make tea, there's a lot of particulate. So we'll make the tea, then pour it through the filter here. Wait, shut up. You're not actually gonna put tea in it, are you? It's the tea cooled PC, Linus. Is that sanitary? Will it like rot? No. Oh, well. What do you mean no? It's fine. I don't think you know this for a fact. Where's, where did the PT nuke go? Oh my God. You're gonna put microbe food into the loop, then you're gonna put an antimicrobial agent in it. Look at the look on his face. That's what he actually intends yes, to do. Yes, 100%. But Tom asked us for a PC that's cooled by tea. Do you want to put something that's not tea I in his tea I just assumed cool you were gonna make brown coolant with dye. No, we have tea. <laughs> How do you want to do this? We can either make tea in the teapot and then pour through the pour over, we or we can just make it in the tea. If we don't make it in the teapot, okay. I mean, come on. I think it should be really strong. And we have to hold our pinkies out like this. 
Always. Oh my God, that's a lot of tea bags. Well, yeah, but it, we need a like, What are we playing, Halo? <laughs> anyway, it needs to look like tea in the loop. <laughs> Now, I have to confess, I'm pretty ignorant when it comes to tea and coffee. So what exactly makes this useful for removing particulate matter? Well, it doesn't. Oh, this the coffee does. filter. Yeah. I, got I thought there was something special about like the shape of it or something. I mean, look. Okay, you showed me a fan that works by vibrating a thing and a cooler that works by vortexing air. So if you told me there's a special shape that gets the particles out of coffee, I'd have believed you. Nope. That looks pretty strong to me. Here, we can give it a quick pour. Right? Oh, well, before you do that, you can pour yourself some. Oh. Give it a taste, make sure it's good. Also tea. That is, that is strong. <laughs> so why don't we let that steep for a second and do some finishing touches sure. on the case. On our cable panel here, we need, you know, it can't just be left white. Yeah. So I have a little bit of an idea. What's on the inside of that panel? No, there's nothing on the inside of that panel, David. The Canadian government will give you a picture of the queen for free. Oh, shut up. <laughs> as long as you have a Canadian address, they will send you a picture of the queen for free. So that's what this is. <laughs> so we need to attach her <laughs> to the back. Oh God, <laughs> no. I haven't told the viewers this yet, but there was a mix up in our fittings. Oh. So we have custom made fittings. These are the first 30 in existence oh. in this computer. Cool but they screwed up and sent us the wrong ones. The correct ones just arrived right now. They're exactly the same, except these ones have tiny little teacups. Oh my and God. And spiffing Brit logos on them. <gasps> these are amazing. I think we can do it. I think we have to do it. Yeah, we have. What choice do we have? We have to have the tea ones. Okay. Well, that was quick. That was easy. Um, you know, this is wider, right? No, it isn't. It's fine. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It is. Well, but like the bits that matter aren't. Wait, what is this? What is it? Where's the... No, you're, not, you're not supposed the, to look at that. For the potato famine. <laughs> you're going to put that in the Brits PC? No, that, that doesn't... No one talks about that, Linus. <laughs> We're just sweeping it under the rug? Uh, one, one thing, one thing. Before you do that, before you do that. Oh, you got, ah, right. that's boiling water, Alex. Yeah, well, you're supposed to use the gooseneck, but I didn't. So we just do that, let that go through. All right. Oh, because then you get all of the flak flakes off the filter. Papery taste. Papery. Goes away. Oh, the taste. Yeah, the taste. He's not gonna drink it, Alex. Well, I don't know. I can't live knowing that I sent the spiffing Brit some papery ass tea. This is extremely hot tea. Hopefully our CPU doesn't shut down due to overheating before the radiator can cool it off. And there you go. Oh there you go. yeah. We ready? Are you guys ready? We need to get slow-mo of the tea pouring out of the teapot. So uh, we gotta. I'd be lying if I said I didn't absolutely love it. It's very frothy, not really ideal tea for cooling. Our CPU temperatures are only 40 degrees. Yeah, the tea's already not that hot. Wow. I'm just gonna let a little bit of foam out. I'm starting to get a little bit. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's about all the foam we're getting out of it. So hopefully he's okay with foamy tea. Now you can never say we didn't give you head. And uh, <sighs> time for another adventure. We're taking out the funnel now. Ah, oh, you said this was gonna be so spicy, Alex. We got this. We've seen so much worse than this. Oh yeah, that's actually fine. I do have to wonder how much performance we're giving up compared to water. Did you take a before or? No. No, okay. Ooh! Oh, that looks so cool! Wow! Holy crap, this is amazing. What was the laser doing just now? It was engraving it. But how oh, did- Oh, go easy. Oh, go easy. This is why I asked what the laser was doing. I got the simple answer of engraving, which was sort of helpful. Uh, but what I really needed to know was that we were um, lasering through blue paint to white paint. So when I was getting a bunch of white stuff, um, 
going you know, all over everywhere. I would have known if that question had been answered <laughs> that I was scrubbing too hard and going through the blue paint. So don't look too closely, but woo! <laughs> oh, that top half yeah, the top half looks great. See, look how good the panel looks. This thing looks amazing. Oh, that is awesome. What I wanted to test mm -hmm. was how many blocks of cheese we can spawn in at once. Luke did this test a while ago with a 5820K and was able to get 8,000 rolls of cheese. All right, 1,000 blocks of cheese. There we go, all right. All right. 1,000 blocks of cheese, not Rock too bad. 2,000. Ah, should we uh, just do a couple more? I would 1,200, you know? Wait, what? What the crap? Did you just put down 4,000 blocks yeah, 4, of cheese? Yeah, 4,000 blocks of cheese. Is our computer even stable, Alex? It needs more tea. Okay, 1,000 cheeses. All right. We did 1,000, right. no problem. Really? Can't do 2,000 cheeses. Well, how did Luke do so much cheese? Oh, the cheeses roll away from him. Maybe there's too many just like in the frame. Thousand okay, cheese. here we go. Now wait for them to yeah. settle. Wait for them to settle in a little bit here. Oh my God, I love our cheese avalanche. <laughs> okay, hit her again, hit her again. What? Oh yeah, 250 frames per second in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 1440p, absolutely cranked. The problem is clearly with Skyrim, not with our computer, because this is running fine. To commemorate Spiff's number one video though, which was of Skyrim, Kalanan made this. Fork give me. Where does it go? Just stick it on the back. Enjoy your computer! Hope you love it as much as we loved making it. And as much as we love our sponsor. It's Seasonic. Oh, it's Seasonic. They, so they just sponsored the whole video? Yeah. Oh, well they make great power supplies. It'll be probably the most reliable thing in here given that everything else is cooled by tea. They offer up to 12 year warranties, up to 80 plus titanium efficiency and Units everywhere from the most affordable to the most overpowered on the market. No matter what you need to power, Seasonic has got you covered. They really wanted us to show off that it was actually running in the computer. Oh. So uh, here, here it is. Seasonic. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy the build that Alex worked on with Nerdforge. It is incredible.